It's Valentine's Day, where we celebrate love and friendship and my bunny Felix's birthday. And because it's Valentine's Day, I am back with a new edited Supermassive Games video. Today we rank the top 10 best couples and duos in the franchise. So yes, it's not just about romances, but also about a couple of friends that become a duo and then kick a lot of ass together, something that happens a lot throughout the games. Funnily enough, I counted around 16 that could be worth to talk about. And the 6 that I'm not including on the ranking are Conrad and Fliss, because that felt kinda random, Taylor and Daniel, because it's just okay, and Eric and Rachel, plus Nick and Rachel, plus Jacob and Emma, and Abigail plus Nick, because that shit is just toxic all around. I mean, yes, Nick and Abigail can still kiss even after the entire campfire situation, but Nick also may rip her head off, so, you know. Anyways, let's not waste any more time and rank the top 10 best duos and couples in Supermassive Games. Mark and Kate is an interesting duo, because unlike other romances in the games that are either already a couple or can become one, these two were a couple and it's up to our choices whether they come back together or not. And personally, I thought the chemistry was enjoyable and I liked the sake on the romance inclusion for The Devil Me. Yet, their relationship is not a huge highlight otherwise and kind of forgettable given that the other characters and the other romance in the same game are even better and more memorable, but it's still an okay 10th place. Now while I would consider both characters and even their relationship to be not that interesting and memorable, I still find it simply refreshing to have a rather pure relationship that can even lead to marrying each other. So yeah, even though Alex and Julia are kind of forgettable characters in a rather bland cast, their relationship felt genuine and nice. Nothing too crazy or extraordinary, but as mentioned, it's refreshing to have a relationship that while it can lead to a breakup as well, it can also lead to the two marrying each other at the end of the journey. Matt and Emily is a weird case, because on first look it feels actually kind of abusive and Emily's just commanding a boyfriend around, but what I personally really love about it is how there are still moments where you realize, hey, they really love each other, and I mean, Matt may literally sacrifice himself for her, which will lead to Emily worrying about his safety. Again, it's always up to your choices how a relationship progresses, and I honestly believe this one could have been explored much much more, but for what it was, it's still a very enjoyable chemistry and relationship within the Until Dawn. Caitlin and Dylan is actually more of a makeshift duo, given that before chapter 8 they don't necessarily feel like huge friends, but once they go off to the sculpture together, they become a highlight of the quarry. They keep kicking ass across chapter 9 and 10 and easily become one of the most memorable parts of the game. There is not much yet to say at all, honestly, but do we need to? Both are great characters that make a great duo and made the quarry and its final stages a whole lot greater. Now I know that a lot of people would have expected this duo on a higher ranking, at least that's what I'm expecting. I'm even expecting them in the first place for some people, and I totally understand why. But let me explain. Dylan and Ryan basically carry the Koi's first half. The chemistry is extremely enjoyable. Seeing the more light out of Dylan try to get the most out of the rather close to himself and serious Ryan with obvious feelings present is such an enjoyable time. The main reason why these two do not get a higher ranking on this list, however, is how it feels like it just gets stitched throughout, and Dylan teams up with Caitlyn while Ryan teams up with Laura. It was kind of weird to be building up these two with a clear romantical influence from one side without ever actually exploring said option, which was kind of unfortunate and one of the game's most missed opportunities. However, Dylan and Ryan is still a highlight duo with many memorable moments across the game and franchise that will forever have a place in the heart of Supermassive Games fans. How happy I was when we actually got the first LGBTQ couple within the franchise. And it still pains me that I literally let the girl kill the other girl that she loved. Why, Nicholas? But even up until the point where I sadly had Jamie kill Aaron, their relationship was very cute and enjoyable. And while not as highlight filled and further explored as relationships like the both of them, Aaron and Jamie feel very, very wholesome together. The chemistry is great, and it's one of my personal highlights about the devil of me, and something I will look back on very preciously. Now I know that many people expected this couple to be in the top 3, maybe even on top of the list. Maybe because of nostalgia, maybe because Markiplier turned into an Ashley simp, but just like for Eric and Rachel, or for Abigail and Nick, or for Emma and Jacob, Ashley may literally get Chris killed, so you know. But assuming we manage to get the best outcome, then Ashley and Chris's relationship is quite endearing. Ashley's just a confused and terrified young girl that does not deserve any of she's going through, and Chris does his best to protect her at all costs. The kiss before Chris goes off to save Josh was such a beautiful moment that made many people cheer and joy, which I think says a lot about their relationship. It can end terribly, but when Ashley and Chris works out, it's one of the best couples in Supermassive Games. 
Jesse Khan is a character that many people think should have received more screen time for El Dante Dawn, and that's a fact. Yet, the bit of screen time she has is spent really well as we get to see one of the most endearing relationships across the franchise. Mike and Jessica feel very endearing and cute together. They play pranks, they joke around, tease each other, it's just lovely to see. When the things then turn to the extreme, Mike turns into an action star, trying his hardest to manage the poor crew to save the girl he loves, and even if he doesn't, it will pain him for the rest of the game. But if he does save her, it will remain word all the way through, showing how much he cares for her. And at the end, the two then also talk Talk about each other in the end credits, working for each other's safety. In the beginning, some thought both are annoying, but not only does Mike turn out to be badass and Jessica go, you can only feel sorry for what you went through, you also start to appreciate how lovely and memorable the relationship truly is. In my opinion, most enduring couple across all supermans of games, Max and Laura feels like a relationship that you just can't help. But love. Yes, Max claws out Laura's eye and then also bites her, but I think Abigail and Nick, outside of all the werewolf stuff, it's such a truly heartfelt relationship. They really care for another, they really want the best for another, and as dragging as Chapter 7 is, their chemistry is enjoyable, and it really makes you want to see the two escape this nightmare together. Wait, did I say chemistry? It's also truly a shame that one of my favorite scenes of the quarry is such a rare one, and that's a reunion of the two on the outlet. Lost man. Max. Yeah. What are you wearing? Oh, you mean this old thing? Just something I threw together. <laughs> Your eye looks a whole lot better. Yeah. Can we go home now? Max and Laura are just endearing all the way till the end, and in my opinion, the greatest couple across super massive games. But there is one duo that have to be above them. You know that these two had to earn themselves the first place. Shout out to Nick and Jace, by the way. But I think we can all agree that there is no better duo in the entire franchise than Jace and Sully. I would go as far to argue that their story is the best spearing and butterfly path in all of the games. From more enemies that could have killed one another at the beginning of the game, to brothers in arms that together survive a vampire invasion, Jason going from ready to cool Selene to putting his own life on the line to save him is peak supermassive games. I'm literally ignited with passion writing about this duo, the perfect showcase of how one should never make you forget that everyone is a human and that within every person could be a friend or savior. Jason and Salim, the top of my list and in my opinion best duo we will probably ever see in super massive games. And this is it, with my top 10 Smash of 4 Valentine's Day ranking the best couples and duos across super massive games. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Tell me all about it down below in the comments, leave a like if you enjoyed the video and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more. We'll see each other again with more super massive game content and lots of other gaming content in the upcoming time, so stay tuned, thank you for watching, stay safe, have been happy, see you again soon, bye.